Hello everyone, this is Alan. Uh, this is my pr er, first video that I'm recording uh, with some assistance from Nate Cerami. And we're going to be using a gadget that he brought to me from Arizona. And this is the gadget. Uh, this is a filter that was used tank. for a fish tank. So really curious to see what comes out of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dirty pour uh, over a 14 by 14 canvas and with a Payne's gray background or a base paint. Uh, one of the things I want to emphasize with everyone is making sure your canvas is level. Um, I've seen, I've had several instances myself, we've seen videos where uh, if the canvas is not level, uh, when you put it on your on your table, uh, the paint will flow in an odd direction, and so I I emphasize that you are getting a level canvas. That is one of my teaching uh, teaching thoughts. So I'm just sharing that with you, and I am good. So what I'm going to do, so you don't have to endure the pain of watching me pour the uh, base paint, is I'm going to pause and get my base paint settled, and then I'll show you the paints I'm using, and the method, and the tool again. Okay, we're back. I have put the paints gray down, evened it down on the canvas. Well, saved you probably five minutes of viewing unpleasure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dirty pour into this uh, filter. This is a fish tank filter. And what I'm going to do for the colors that I'm going to use is the Soho Cobalt Blue, Folk Arts Blue Flash. First time I've used the Blue Flash. Lucas Cyan, Craft Smarts Sea Mist Pearl and Dalarani Thalo Turquoise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dirty pour into this filter. Um, but first I need to fill my cup. And so I'm going to start with the Soho Cobalt Blue. Tilt this forward. You can't see anything you're doing from where it was. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer these paints and if you've been watching me and Christina's channel you will know that I love to use paint and I end up using more than I should anybody that's seen my leaf blower escapade will realize that it's a learning experience and I have Nate Cerami uh, joining me in the background, just supervising, uh, providing his advice. I'm just here to watch this happen. <laughs> Nate is the one that provided this, uh, this gadget. So I, I am uh, excited to see what happens with this because I've never seen this, this type of gadget used before. Either of them, that's why I... I saw it and I had to bring it to him for this trip. See, so I just knew he would love using it, and so no idea how this is gonna turn out. Did you want to show them afterwards what the bottom looks like before you jump in? I will. Okay. I will. Um, some people call me the gadget man. Uh, I like to call it just gadget magic. I've seen a lot of different uh, results. Uh, from pores, from different types of uh, gadgets, uh, anywhere from sink strainers to bottle bottoms uh, to um, hair infusers, uh, fruit infusers. Oh, don't forget your Halloween. Oh, my test tubes. Yep, yep. Test tubes and beaker pours. So 
So if you guys have any gadgets out there that you want to see Alan try out, feel free to send them to their PO box, which is listed below, and he will do a video for you guys. Absolutely. Listen, jump right in, do a video, try it out. We have Monica Tiamone who sent a organizer the other night. We had Jennifer Lafond who sent... Um... A couple different gadgets, a sink strainer, which I did not have uh, great success with, but I have some ideas on how I'm going to improve upon that. So Jennifer, I'm going to give that a try again on a future video. I'm looking at his pile he has right now. He has he's quite a few going on over here. So. I'm sure you're gonna start doing like refilming some of them, putting up some videos with the ones you currently have. And I'm gonna to try to improve on them too. Well, you tried most of them once, and so now you have a general idea of what they do and what you could do to now fix it or change it or. And lastly, I'm just gonna give this Soho Cobalt Blue a squirt right down the middle. So I have probably two bins of gadgets. Uh, I have spaghetti strainers, popcorn buckets, uh, martini, plastic martini cups, and most of those I've already used at least once. Uh, there's one interesting one that I'm going to try in the future that Tina has done called the ice cube tray uh, that I, I'm looking forward to trying that too. So. What I'm going to do, this is going to be a quick pour. I'm going to start out on the edge. It's going to kind of be like a uh, pour and drag. So we're going to see what we get out of this. Uh, the tube has been sprayed with the WD-40 and the cup has also been sprayed. So the paint should come out pretty quick. Here goes. Whoa. And we got a lot of paint coming out quick. Now oh, that did come through. But look at the, the stripes coming through on it. Maybe thinking a central pour would have been. Live and learn. So I'm going to... That was a lot of paint. When it came out though, did it come out all four sides or just the cent like two sides in particular? Did you see? Uh, I was so focused on getting the paint in that I didn't actually realize how quick it was coming out of those uh, side holes. I'm actually wondering if you do like a center and just leave it how it would turn out we've had a chance to like pour th a little slower maybe I don't know look at those cells though that are popping up right in, near your hand yeah that. and I'm expecting some of this paint's gray as I pour the paint off to pop through uh, the blues Get my cuppy hands out here. And we do have uh, the folk art blue flash in there. So I'm expecting that to kind of pop within the, uh, the layers of paint that we're putting in also. The cells on the two corners are really, really showing out. Hopefully I don't pour them off. I also kind of like those little rings popping up. 
pan's gray in that corner. I do want to pour some of this excess paint off otherwise this painting will take days to dry I'm just going to try to center it a little see how quickly it came through I'm wondering if uh, like a more focused tree ring right down the center of the tube might work or a larger canvas to see what kind of results. I was thinking out. maybe a little larger canvas myself. <laughs> or a little less paint. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the torch to that. But first I've got to change my gloves so I don't drip. see the amount of paint that's on the canvas yet um, just from the number of air bubbles that are popping especially in the center I'm thinking I'm going to need to pour a little more off <coughs> excuse me which which direction are you thinking? I'm liking how the uh, Payne's Gray is rising up around the edges. Um, I'm thinking because it's not as prominent here, this is the direction I'm going to be pouring off. I really don't want to lose the cell structure that's over here or over here if I can avoid that. Give that a torch one more time. And you can see how the uh, Payne's Gray is starting to come up through the different levels of blue. look at it I'm not going to do anything else with this other than put it on the drying rack not sure how clear you can see the iridescence that's uh, the iridescent blue that's in there you can see that the uh, the paint's gray is rising within the paint and I'm sure this is going to change uh, as it dries that more of that darker color is going to come up through the blues 
and uh, give us some additional cell structure. So I would just like to thank you for watching the initial, the first video that I'm presenting to you tonight. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me uh, at the link below. And just like to say thank you everyone for supporting me, subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, just a reminder, tomorrow night is Monday Night Live, 9, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come to Christina Welch Art on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much, and see you on the next one. Bye.